What causes under eye puffiness? What are the key factors, apart from aging, that lead to loosening of skin under the eyes and puffy eyes? Can stress alone play a major role in leading to this situation, or is it much more than that? Ever since a child is born, he hears that stress is bad for the skin and mind. But can stress alone cause sagging of skin under the eyes, or is it also aging and heredity? What are the major reasons for under eye puffiness? How is it caused? Thank you for your question. You submitted your question without a photo, and you're asking what causes under eye puffiness. And by the the types of questions and follow -up questions within the submitted question, you keep asking about stress. Uh, besides aging as to um, affecting the skin under the eyes, as well as what is essentially the cause of under eye puffiness. Well, I can certainly help you um, understand this based on how I explain this to my patients every day in my practice. A little bit of background, I'm a board certified cosmetic surgeon and fellowship trained oculofacial plastic and reconstructive surgeon. I've been in practice in Manhattan and Long Island for over 20 years helping people deal with the aesthetics of the under eye area has been a huge part of my practice for my entire career and it is very understandable the questions you're asking because this is what everyone essentially comes into the office uh, stating as to why they look the way they do and essentially can always almost be be distilled into a common phrase and that is that they, they are always saying that they're tired of looking tired. Frequently when people have under eye puffiness as well as other signs of under eye um, aging, they can be often um, interpreted as looking like they're lacking sleep, lacking energy, that uh, they may be um, drinking too much. There's a lot of unconscious perceptions and interestingly that th there has been um, already uh, an interesting psychological uh, th uh, manifestation of where people look that was actually uh, determined uh, in studies that essentially when people look at you they look at the eyes and then go down to the chin in a kind of a triangular pattern so nice looking eyes all the way down to the chin is a very important area. So naturally people when they see someone who doesn't look like they have energy naturally think they have that they're tired. So to begin with let's start with the first question about under eye puffiness. Now generally speaking when people reach a point where they're seeking this type of attention and asking a question like this it means that the puffiness is constant. And so when puffiness under the eyes is constant, it is generally caused by something called lower eyelid fat prolapse. Lower eyelid fat prolapse means that the fat that's normally around your eyes pushes forward and creates this bulge. Now you're asking what mainly causes this? Well, essentially it's genetics. What many of my patients will tell me, even if they're in their 30s, 40s, and older, they'll say they've had bags under their eyes ever since they were young. What happens is genetically and, of course, with stressors, aging, environmental changes, or stressors, you can certainly watch this area of puffiness get worse. Now, that being said, Essentially, we have uh, many different options these days, and it can be quite overwhelming for patients seeking for optimal solutions. In our practice, we provide everything from skincare products to lasers to injectables to advanced surgery. So, most of the, for for any patient who walks in, basically, we're able to customize a treatment plan for their eyes that's just right for them. So, when you ask about stress, well, it is understandable because, frankly, it is an area in the body that does seem to be impacted by stressors. Now, what does that mean? Well, emotional, physical stress certainly can accelerate aging. I always say that look at any American president on the first day and look at them four years later, there, you could see it in their eyes, the, 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 the stress of this, of this job. When you look at anybody who smokes, 
somebody who keeps irregular hours, works nights, and you often see it in their eyes. So when it comes to helping people with under eye puffiness, we actually have kind of a straightforward branching point of decision. One is, is the puffiness of a certain level? Uh, and when I say, is it mild? If it's mild puffiness, you can sometimes improve the appearance with an injectable filler, something to fill an area called the tear trough. And that we do very routinely. For people who are just starting to notice puffiness that's slight, then placing a filler like a, uh, an, uh, a uh, hyaluronic acid filler is a very nice way to soften that transition. When someone has more prominent puffiness, which means that there's a lot more fat pushing forward, then fillers are simply not going to do the job. Those, those situations we do a procedure typically called a lower eyelid blepharoplasty. And generally speaking, I use an approach called a transconjunctival approach, which means I go from the inside of the eyelid, and that way I can avoid an external incision, and I'm able to retain the natural shape and character of the eyes. This is a procedure we do in our practice under local anesthesia with light intravenous sedation, which means that our patients walk out pretty much feeling fine and refreshed, and it takes very little time, and it's done in a facility approved by the Joint Commission, the same organization that certifies hospitals. Now, that being said, there are also strategies to help skin wrinkling discolorations, and this is the other part of the equation to help improve and maximize the appearance of the eyes. So this includes technologies such as the use of platelet-rich plasma derived from your own blood, to stimulate collagen and improve discolorations and skin quality, as well as the use of different lasers and radio frequency devices to improve the texture, quality, and color, and smoothness of the eyes. So as you can see, there are a lot of different strategies, or I should say, there are a lot of different tools, and what you need is an optimal strategy to get the best appearance for yourself. I always say that it is still very important to maintain a healthy lifestyle. It's the foundation of optimal experience in whatever procedure you pursue. But it is important to avoid smoking, take good care of your health, drink lots of water, eat a balanced diet, and manage stress. You know, basically anything that's good for your health is good for your skin. So I would recommend you meet with qualified, experienced cosmetic surgeons, uh, people who are, who are experienced in eyelid surgery, particularly under eye surgery, who provide a wide range of solutions, as opposed to people who are only offering single solutions or who have limitations. A lot of times, doctors who don't perform surgery will always dissuade patients from doing surgery. It's unfortunately just the reality, or even if you go to a, a, a practitioner who isn't a physician, they may just keep uh, trying to point lasers at you and try all kinds of modalities without treating the underlying cause. So I think it's better to have someone who is at the top of the chain who is able to do everything rather than try different stabs at doing things that are probably not going to be as helpful. So I hope that was helpful. I wish you the best of luck. Thank you for your question.